Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the Jan 2013 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Okay, so the question reads, KAM Enterprise provided the following summary of their income statement for the year ended 31st December 2012. Okay, so they give us an income statement down here. Let's take a look through it. KAM Enterprise income statement for the year ending 31st December 2012. Sales revenue 75,000. Beginning inventory 12. Purchases 40, which means cost of goods available is 52. Less ending inventory of 8, giving us cost of goods of 44. 44 subtracted from 75 gives us a gross profit of 31. Expenses total 21,000. Net income is 10,000. Okay. They tell us as well the following list of balances was also provided. So we have a little table down here. What are they showing us? Capital 50,000, buildings 26,005, inventory 8,000, accounts payable or creditors 10,000, cash 6,500, bank overdraft 5,000, accounts receivable or debtors 14,000, motor vehicles 20,000. Okay, what do they want us to do? So part A of the question says, using the vertical style of presentation, prepare a classified balance sheet for KAM Enterprise as at 31st December 2012 for 10 marks. So the vertical style of a balance sheet is the one to which you should be accustomed. If you want to check out my balance sheet playlist, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So if you're not too comfortable with your balance sheets, check those videos out and then come back here. If you are comfortable with your balance sheets, let's get to it. Okay, so of course, please head up your statement with the name of the entity, the name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. So they weren't specific as to which method of presentation to use, whether it was permanence or liquidity. So you have carte blanche. You can use whichever method you prefer. I like the order of permanence, so I'm going to start with my non-current assets. So if we go to the list of balances, I'm seeing buildings, and I'm also seeing motor vehicles. So we're going to put those two items in. So of course, head of your section, non-current assets, buildings, motor vehicles, and a subtotal for that. Next, of course, we have current assets. So if you go back across here, we're seeing inventory. Then we're seeing accounts receivable of 14. Now the bank was an overdraft, it's a liability. And of course, we have cash of 6,500. So let's populate the current asset section with those three items and get a subtotal for current assets, which will give us a total for assets of 75,000. Now, we only have current liabilities. We had accounts payable or creditors of 10,000 and the bank overdraft of five. There were no non-current liabilities, so we don't have to worry about those. So bank overdraft is five, accounts payable is 10, giving us a total for liabilities of 15,000. And of course, when we subtract that from the $75,000 value for total assets, we get net assets of 60,000. Of course, net assets must be financed by capital, or the opening balance of capital according to the question, and this, the table across here, sorry, was 50,000. So we're gonna put that in, and you might be like, well, Chris, what else are we supposed to have here? Well, we could add net profit and minus drawings. We had no drawings, but we did have net profit as per the income statement above. And that figure of 10,000 fits perfectly to add to balance, the balance at start of capital, sorry, of 50,000, giving us a balance at end of 60,000. And our statement of financial position balances. Okay, let's take a look at part B. All right, so part B wants us to calculate three ratios, net income margin, return on capital invested, and the current ratio. So let's pull up the appropriate statements and take a look at those calculations, shall we? So the net income margin, we can find that information in the income statement. It simply requires us to take net income and divide it by the sales revenue. So that's what we're going to plug in here. We're going to put 10,000 divided by 75, and that is about 13.33%. Okay, the next item was the return on capital invested. So the return on capital invested is how much you earn as the owner on your capital investment, right? The, you, basically, what you earn is your net profit. So you express that as a percentage of your capital. So the same net profit of 10,000 applies here as our numerator, and the capital invested was, of course, 50,000 as per the balance sheet, and that gives us a nice, a nice flush round figure of 20%. Now, some people prefer to use average capital. What is average capital? Well, you take your opening capital, you add your closing capital and you divide by two. In that case, we would get $55,000 and the ratio would fall to 18.18%. 18 
So of course, here I would opt to use opening capital because I sort of prefer that figure. In any case, the last ratio they want us to find is the current ratio. So the current ratio requires us to take current assets, which of course we could see across here is 28,500, and divide by the current liabilities, which of course we can see is equal to 15,000. And when we do that, we get a current ratio of 1.9 to 1. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so part C says, using the current ratio, comment on the liquidity position of KAN Enterprise. All right, so if I didn't say it before, which I don't think I did, if you need to take a look at ratios, the calculations, their meanings, I'm going to put a card up there to my ratios playlist, as well as a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out if you need to get a bit better at ratios and commentary on these. And of course, at the CSEC Form 5 O level, it's not heavy on commentary and analysis. They ask a lot of basic stuff, and that's what we're going to stick with. So the question said to comment on the liquidity position of KAM Enterprise using the current ratio. So what I have here is simple. KAM Enterprise's current ratio is 1.9 to 1, which means that it has a dollar and 90 cents worth of current assets to repay each one dollar of current liabilities. This is a relatively good position to be in in terms of liquidity. Simple and straightforward, no fuss, no muss. Let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so now we are getting into comparison and comparison is where we really use ratios, right? So it says the following ratios were provided for True Brothers Enterprise, which operates a similar business. So net income margin is 15%, return on capital invested is 18%. Using these ratios and those calculated in B above, make two different comments comparing the performance of KAM Enterprise and True Brothers Enterprise. So let's get all this information visible. So we're seeing the ratios for True Brothers, 15% for the net income margin and return on capital invested of 18%. And we are seeing our ratios across here for KAM or CAM Enterprises, 13.33% 13, sorry for the net income margin and return on capital invested of 20%. So they said to make two separate comments. So let's talk about the net income margin first. So clearly, True Brothers has a higher net income margin than does CAM Enterprises. So we can simply say True Brothers Enterprise has a higher net income margin, 15%, which means that it keeps more of its sales revenue as net profit. Sorry, I was supposed to put the word net there. So it keeps more of its sales revenue as net profit than does KAM Enterprises. And its net income ratio is 13.33%. Right, so that's what the net income margin or net income ratio shows what percentage of your sales revenue remains after deducting all their expenses and hence is available to the owner as their reward, as their return on capital. Now, speaking of return on capital invested, for True Brothers, we're seeing it's 18%, whereas for CAM Enterprises, it's 20%. So that, 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 of course, is using only opening capital and not average capital. So using the opening capital of 50,000 and not average capital of 55, we have a return on capital invested of 20% for CAM. So that's higher than for True Brothers, right? So CAM Enterprises, however, has a higher return on capital invested, 20%, than does True Brothers, 18%, which means that the owners of CAM earn a higher rate of return on their invested capital than do the owners of True. All right. Of course, if you use the average capital of 18.18% for CAM, you would say they earn basically or practically the same thing, rounded off to the nearest whole number, nearest percentage. Okay, I think we have one more part of this question. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so it says that True Brothers Enterprise has recorded the following changes in stock during December 2012. So we have a little stock table down here. So it says opening stock 500 units at a cost price of $14 per unit. We have three sets of purchases. We purchased 500 at $10, 700 at 12, and 300 at $11. And then we have sales on the 22nd of December of 1,400 units. What do they want us to do specifically? Calculate the value of True Brothers Enterprises ending inventory using the first in, first start method of stock valuation. And B, state the amount or the number rather of units in inventory at close. Okay. So basically, they want us to find the number of units in ending inventory, and they want us to find the value of ending inventory. Now, it's only worth two marks. Now, I did a relatively elaborate weekend just to kind of show some detail here. All right, so I have True Brothers Enterprise calculation of closing stock on December 31st, 2012, 5 So I have a couple of columns. 
unit, sorry, I have three columns, units, cost per unit, and dollars. So the first thing I put in was the opening stock from the table across here. So that's 500 units at $14 per unit. Gives us a cost of $7,000 for opening inventory. Now we had purchases, we had three sets. The first set was on the 4th of December, 500 units at $10. So that's gonna give us a cost of 5,000. 500 by 10 is $5,000 worth of inventory. Now on the 4th of December, we're seeing we bought 700 more at $12 a piece. So we put that in December the 10th, 700 at 12, $8,400 worth of inventory. And of course, on the 14th, we are seeing a third purchase of 300 units at 11. So we're going to put that here as well, right? Now, the next line, I'm going to show a total for the number of units and a total for the value of inventory at that point in time. So 500 plus 500 plus 700 plus 300 gives us 2,000 units of inventory available for sale. And the total value of which is simply the sum of the, the value of the individual batches, which gives us 23,700. Now, we had a sale on the 22nd of December of 1,400 units. The value of the cost price, or the, sorry, selling price is irrelevant because we're not calculating profit or revenue. We simply want to know what is the value of ending inventory and how many units are left. So, if we sell 1,400 units, we are going to have 600 units left. Now, what's the value? Well, it depends on which batches those 600 units are coming from. Now, how do we know? Well, we know it's FIFO. What does FIFO mean? FIFO means first in, first out. Now, if you need to brush up on stock valuation, I'm going to put a column there and a link in the description below to my stock valuation video. So check it out if you need to and then come back. But for those of you who are comfortable, let's discuss this now. So again, we had 2,000 units available for sale. We sold 1,400, which leaves us with 600 units. Now, from which batches are those 600 going to be from? So, under FIFO, when we sell, we're going to sell from the first batches in, right? First in, first out. So, we're going to sell from this batch, and then sell from that batch, and then from the third batch, and then from the fourth batch, finally. Now, we sold 1,400 units. So, if we start from this batch and sell 500, it means we still have 900 left to sell. So, the next batch that we sell from will be the second batch, bought on the fourth. So when we sell 500 from there, we still have 400 left to sell because five and five is a thousand and we're selling 1400. So we need 400 more. Where's that going to come from? That's going to come from this batch. Now that batch has 700. If you sell 400 from that batch, you're going to have 300 left from it. And we can see that here. So the closing stock is going to be comprised of 300 at 12, right? Because again, these two first batches were completely sold out and then we sold 400 from this batch of seven, leaving us with 300. And this last batch here was completely untouched. And then that's going to give us a total number of units of 600 at a value of 6,009. Now, another way you can see it is like this. If you have 600 units left under FIFO, remember under FIFO, you sell from the top come down, which means what is left is from the bottom go up. So you could start from your last batch I start to count 600. So if you have 300 from here and you need 600 in total, you need 300 more. That's going to come from the batch that immediately precedes it. So again, you can see it'll take 300 from that batch of $12 per unit and the final batch of 300 at 11. Okay, and that's about it. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question four from the Jan 2013 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I can. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some nice free PUA handouts that you'll find useful. As per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.